Arizona is playing a big part in a national pilot program designed to better prepare high school graduates for college and career. I'll speak to some leaders of the state's Move On When Ready initiative in a moment. But first, David Major takes us to a Phoenix school that's implementing the program. We are going to do quick draw debates today. These ninth grade students have an opportunity to earn a high school diploma by the end of their sophomore year. Should the U.S. have helped the League of Nations? Dwayne, begin. It should because it was the creator of the Treaty of Versailles. And They're part of a pilot program called Move On When Ready. ASU Preparatory Academy in downtown Phoenix, a charter school operated by ASU, is one of 14 Arizona schools participating in the first year of the program. We are really preparing students for the rigors of college, for post-secondary study. Deborah Gonzalez is ASU Prep's chief academic officer. We've actually changed the course taking sequence so that students can get core requirements out of the way early. We, the, the level of rigor is definitely different. It would cost us extra money to support other people's problems, their own greedy nature of wanting more and more land, more and more control over more and more things. With the Move On When Ready curriculum that students are looking at, it's more about the way students think and the way students apply their knowledge in new and different settings. Okay, what are other reasons that Britain and France thought appeasement was the right thing at the right time? Donna. Move On When Ready schools use a State Board of Education approved curriculum from a world-class provider like Cambridge International Examinations. And we purposely chose Cambridge because of that, that competing globally aspect. It was important to us that we had something that was an international benchmarked curriculum. Students who pass the Cambridge exams in history, English, math, and science are considered academically ready for college or career. The door doesn't open and we're kicking them out. The door opens wider so that they have another range of opportunities available to them. They can earn a Grand Canyon diploma and move on to pursue other interests. They can enroll in a community college, or they can stay in high school and take college-level courses. Our job is to make sure that by the time they've reached that BES examination and demonstrated their readiness, that readiness is really an indicator that whatever they choose to do, they can do it and be successful. Our debate went well because we both agreed that... <clears throat> and here now with more is Dr. Sybil Francis, Executive Director of the Center for the Future of Arizona, which is leading the state's Move On When Ready initiative. Tony Badone, Superintendent of the Yuma Union High School District, where the program is being implemented in all five of the district's high schools. And Paul Luna of the Helios Education Foundation, which provides financial assistance to help the Yuma High School's district implement move on when ready district wide it's good to have you all here thanks Thank for joining you. us, Thank you for having us. This, so this is this is a national pilot program yet more than half of the schools are Arizona schools how'd that happen well we're very proud of that fact and we think that it has something to do with uh, the ability of our center to just focus in on this uh, single-mindedly and really work with the schools directly in a way that maybe the other states don't have the opportunity to do so the support that we have from the Helios uh, Education Foundation is absolutely critical, and uh, this is something that's just very important to the state. Was this the kind of thing where schools voluntarily say we want to do it, where some schools say we want to do it, but maybe they shouldn't have done it? How, how did that work? Well, this is a completely voluntary program. It's, uh, it, it's the result of some legislation that was passed that was spearheaded by Senator Rich Crandall, and it opens up a new pathway to high school graduation for students that offers them a Grand Canyon diploma. It is a completely voluntary program. Our center was named by the State Board of Education to incubate this for the first five years. So any school that wants to do this has to come through our center, and we really work with the schools to make sure they have the capacity and the commitment and the ability to carry it out. Why was this attractive to your schools? Our schools have been poised um, to make sure that we hit our goal, and our goal is for every student to be career and college ready, college and career ready, and skills are pretty much the same anymore. Um, by the time they graduate and to be able to go to college without remediation. So this was very attractive in the sense of all of the initiatives that we've done prior to this in Yuma, but this is a capstone in terms of changing exactly the curriculum itself and also what we expect for students. It's, it's a reform. And this started this fall, correct? Yes, it did. So I, probably too early to get some totally concrete results, I would imagine. Let's, let's get a response. What, what, what are you seeing out there? Is it what you expected? more, less, what are you seeing? What we're seeing are teachers much more engaged in, in very deep um, teaching fun things because they're going deep into their subject areas, whether it's history or science or math. We're seeing students who are engaged in deep critical thinking, 
in, on a level they've never been before. We were concerned that um, this might be uh, might re be reflected in lower GPAs, but actually the GPAs of our students so far this semester of our ninth graders are as good or better, um, and they're enjoying it. Does that surprise you that the results already are that strong, or at least that aware, uh, uh, you know, obvious? I wouldn't say I think it's surprising. I, I mean, it's great to hear. You know, um, I think what's exciting about Move On When Ready is when you think about it, is this is an example of the state of Arizona taking a leadership role in education reform. And it's a position that we're not always recognized for in terms of our education system. Um, and when you see the students doing so well and embracing this, I think what it really talks to is a fundamental belief that if we raise the expectation of our students, if we challenge them to perform academically, the fact of the matter is we believe they will, and I think that's what they're showing early on. Prepared for college and or career. How do you, how do you quantify that? How, how, do, how does that work? Well, we have a, a very sophisticated uh, way to do that. You know, we have standards in Arizona, but one of the challenges with having standards is that you, it doesn't necessarily tell you how to get students to those standards. So we actually work with providers who have worked around the world who ha are internationally benchmark, uh, who they provide internationally benchmark syllabus, curriculum, teacher professional development, and very high quality assessments that really can give us the confidence that these students are where they should be and where we say they should be. Is that the same thing with being globally competitive? Again, how do you, how do you quantify something like that? Well, you know, there's different ways that that gets quantified and you, there's various international assessments, there's the performance of other countries, so it's a very complex uh, system in which you do that, but the providers that we have that offer these courses and offer this support to the schools to reach those levels have very long track records. Some of them have been around for over 100 years and are internationally benchmarked. How much do schools have a say in the core classes in the examination process? Well, first of all, our schools signed down to do this, and I, I believe in our teachers' our ability to do that. But um, they have a lot of latitude. The deep, the depth studies that they're doing in the core curriculum, where they go deep into an area, they have a lot of choices. What they don't have choices about um, would be the same as they wouldn't have choice, choice in terms of the curriculum in Arizona, the standards, is that they will learn these skills. The difference is the variable is time. Mm -hmm. Each child is expected to learn these skills. We have students um, with special needs in these classes. We're, we have students who are gifted. It's the whole curriculum, but we believe every child is ready for rigorous curriculum. So they're all experiencing it, but the move on when ready is not that you have to be done in two years or three years or even four years. Um, we want the, the students, to, when they graduate, to be college and career ready. So we're going to do whatever it takes. Talk to us about why this is important. The Helios Foundation. What, what is the Helios Education Foundation? Well, the Helios Education Foundation is uh, is an education foundation focused on uh, helping to ensure we serve two states, Arizona and Florida, that all students in Arizona and Florida are in fact college and career ready and will be successful in post secondary education. So, move on when ready as a concept is something that fits right in line with what we believe is critically important for the two states that we serve to strengthen the education system. And, and, and in particular, and especially what, what Tony and her team are doing down in Yuma, it's a focus on all students. This is not about a, a program that is just gonna touch uh, elite students or t uh, a particular target population. This is about challenging all students, and in, in the case of, uh, of Yuma, and all five high schools, and, and providing them with a more rigorous curriculum to better prepare them for the global competitive environment that they're going to find themselves in. Starts off with all students, but eventually you got a choice. A student has a choice whether or not to get the Grand Canyon Diploma, I believe it's called, and maybe go on to a community college or get more tech classes, or stay in high school and do the traditional, get the, the diploma and on to Starts, I, I think everyone would agree, good idea. Everyone kind of starts and you, you take it from there, but how much does that parting of the ways is that problematic at all? Uh, not at all, because what we're saying is to earn a Grand Canyon Diploma, you need to meet minimum college-ready standards. And that is defined as saying that you are able to demonstrate that you can do math and English at a college-ready level so that you could go to community college without needing to take remedial coursework. Today, Arizona high school students on average take about, about 60 or 70 percent of them need to take remedial coursework. So that would be a huge leap forward. So we're really talking about a very high standard 
but it is a minimum college readiness standard. And then from there, students have options. And so we feel we're actually strengthening the options that students have. So yes, they can move on into a higher uh, level of intensity academic preparation for a four-year selective university. They can go directly to community college and expect to succeed, from which they could also go to the four-year university from there. Mm -hmm. Or they can deepen their, inter their uh, work in career and technical education on a full-time basis. So those are really the, the principal options that students have. Do you find that some parents are a little concerned that maybe a grant Grand Canyon diploma isn't the same kind of diploma they got, or there's something different here. It's not quite traditional. It's not quite what they expected. No, that concern has not occurred. We, we I did have a, an anecdotal story where a parent who has a freshman and a sophomore asked the question, what are you doing? My sophomore can't help my freshman. It's so different. And she said, and I'm not complaining. It sounds like it's pretty good, but the difference is my sophomore can't help my freshman. That's how different the curriculum is this year. Um, I think also, just to add on to what Sybil said, is that for the junior and senior year, what we've done is we've taken the choice of going to CTE or a community college or continuing in the same rigorous curriculum to be college ready or going into AP or whatever it is, that choice really is the child's now. That's really the students and the parents. Before, you could be tracking as early as sixth grade. You could predict in sixth grade which students would be ready, college ready in 12th grade. And that, that, is, that is relatively new, that once ninth grade hits, it start, you're starting afresh. And, and that does sound like an innovative approach. However, what about the fact that even in ninth grade, kids need remedial instruction, that not everyone is on the same plane in ninth grade, eighth grade, seventh grade, look, pick a grade. No one seems to ever be on the same level. How do you get, how do you get a starting Well, in going? some ways, that's actually what we're trying to address through this initiative, which is not all students are on the same page at the same time. So this is the notion of move on when ready. So we're trying to meet each student where that student is. If that student needs some support or remediation, uh, then let's give that to them to get them up to speed. If they're ready to move ahead and are off to the races and very well prepared, they can move ahead in this system. So we don't we don't expect students to necessarily all finish the same work in the same time, and I think that's really the innovation of this system. And, and, and I was going to say, and I think that's what's important <coughs> exactly. about what Tony's doing uh, down down in Yuma, in the sense that it's all of the high schools, and and it's not in isolation. It really is, and you've done so much work to bring the community into this dialogue of understanding what these these higher expectations are going to be so that you start to assess, okay, well, what do we need to now do in middle schools and elementary schools? How do we better prepare our students along the full continuum of education so that as we move forward and we keep getting better, the students are going to move right naturally into this, this more rigorous high school environment. Is that what you expect to see now with incoming freshmen in years to come? That Absolutely. They, they know this is coming, they know this is happening, you better they, step they, it up? They do know that. And I will just add to what Paul said in the sense that our teachers are the first line of communication in our first community. And in our freshman academy teams, we have literally week by week monitored how are they doing in their teams? How are they addressing the needs that you just identified? And they're getting together. We're allowing them time to get together both in their teams and school-wide and district-wide in order to solve problems because the answer's in the room. Yeah. I, it, I, I'm curious because when, whenever change happens in education, there is just a push and a shove and all sorts of fighting and biting. What kind of response are you, are you getting? There has to be some concern, but it sounds like everything's pretty rosy down there. Um, I'm sure that there are concerns. I'm not going to tell you that there aren't. But what I'll tell you again and over and over again is that when we get the teachers in the room and we say, what are the concerns and how can we solve this and what support do you need, that process, that professional learning community process is what's allowing us to do what we're doing. And there's a lot of energy in the room. I am so proud of our teachers in the sense that they've taken it on and they're the leaders. I guess the bottom line for parents watching this or anyone who's interested in, in high school education is, is this a nice idea? Is it a wonderful program? Fine, but is it helping educate Arizona students? Absolutely. We are absolutely excited. We are in 14 schools now. We'll probably be in 25 in 2012. All the schools that we've been working with, we've had the experience that we're having in, in Yuma. All of the schools want to offer this to all of their students, which we think is fantastic because this is a program accessible to all students. We have everything from the charter basis schools implementing this to Phoenix Union, to Yuma, to Wickenburg. We're all over the state, and we expect to expand uh, beyond uh, the schools we have now. And so what, from what you're seeing and from what you're investing in, yeah. you like what you see. Well, you asked us, why is our foundation engaged in this? I mean, we view this as a model. We view this as a model implementation. You know, at some level, with all the community buy-in, with all that they're experiencing down in Yuma, the idea is if we can make this work in the Yuma community across all five high schools, we can take this across the state. 
And in essence, ideally, we can take this across the nation because this will, in fact, ensure that our students are going to perform at a level that they need to internationally to compete. And that's ultimately what this is about. Well, it sounds like Arizona is certainly at the forefront of this. We thank you all for thank joining us tonight to discuss it. Thank you very much.